Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm sure that people will be joining us here in a few minutes. My name is Ryland Johnson. Um, <clears throat> I'm getting a heart, so somebody is liking. People are watching. This is fantastic. I'm so happy to be uh, spending some time with everybody today. Um, this is uh, Book Break. Welcome to Book Break. It is uh, Fulton County Public Library's newest virtual program. Um, it's an adult story time. Uh, so we'll be uh, reading uh, adult stories, short stories, nonfiction stories over the for the uh, foreseeable uh, future. And um, we're all really, really happy to be here. Um, so uh, just at the beginning, again, I, I'm going to, while people are joining and, and starting to watch with us, I'm going to reiterate a couple of times that this is uh, uh, definitely an adult story time. So if you're interested in uh, kids story time, we do kids story time every weekday at 11 a.m. Um, on the Fulton County Library System Facebook page. You can uh, find lots of content for kids. Um, but this is an adult story time, so uh, if you're here for kids stuff, this is for mom and dad. So um, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, uh, this is really important to us to be able to continue to serve our uh, community during this difficult time. So, so thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for spending some time with us. Uh, we love to uh, help our communities, and we're committed to helping, helping uh, however we can through uh, this difficult time. So uh, this is one way that we get to, to spend some, um, some time, uh, time with everybody. Um, uh, so this is Book Break. This is the uh, uh, adult story time, and today we're going to be reading A Clean, Well-Lighted Place by Ernest Hemingway, which is a short story. Um, it's an adult story with some serious themes, so uh, please be advised. Um, but it's called um, A Clean, Well-Lighted Place by Ernest Hemingway. You could find it online. Um, and uh, it's uh, available pretty easily if you, if you just uh, do a basic Google search. So if you'd like to read along when we start reading in just a few minutes, um, that would be awesome. Um, so uh, we're working on a lot of great virtual content for you. Book Break, our adult story time will air on Facebook Live every week on Thursdays at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So stay tuned next week, same time, same channel, um, for another story for adults. Um, remember, you can access digital books for free using uh, your library card information. Um, you can just download some apps, Libby and Hoopla, are the apps that we use for this kind of stuff for free stories and all kinds of different media. Um, there's so much free content that you can use and information on how to gain access uh, to any of that stuff on our website, which is fulcolibrary.org. So that's F-U-L-C-O-L-I-B-R-A-R-Y.org, fulcolibrary.org. Uh, for those of you who are tuning in from around the globe, uh, please support your local public libraries uh, by accessing the content that I know that they have for you as well. So check your local local library's website for details. Um, we've got some fantastic librarians standing by in the comments to direct you to some supporting content for our program today. And uh, they're happy to help. And I'm very, very happy that they're here to, to help me also. So uh, say hello in the comments to all the librarians that are helping us. Um, um, my name is Ryland Johnson. Uh, I'm a librarian at uh, the OC Library. I'm an adult services librarian. Um, and um, today we will be uh, reading a story by Ernest Hemingway called A Clean, Well-Lighted Place. Um, and once again, this is an adult story time. It's not kids' story times. There are serious themes in the short story, so I just want to make that very clear so that nobody ends up listening to a story that's got some serious stuff in it um, that they're not maybe expecting. So um, <clears throat> 
So um, I'm going to begin by just talking about Ernest Hemingway uh, a little bit, um, just a little bit of biographical information for you guys. Um, Ernest Hemingway is a famous American author. He lived from uh, 1899 to 1961. He was a writer and a journalist. He was a war correspondent for uh, much of the early 20th century, and he wrote some um, very, very influential works. Um, in many ways, he led a problematic life. Um, and he wrote some problematic things, um, but he was also a poignant and influential writer. Um, in his writing, uh, he deals with uh, themes, uh, fear, guilt, betrayal, violence, cruelty, drunkenness, greed, apathy, ecstasy, um, serious, strong emotions, um, that we find in the human condition. Um, he's also largely, largely regarded for sculpting the idea of, of, of courage under fire or grace under fire. Um, it's the, the idea of a hero that does amazing things and incredibly brave things, perhaps without breaking a sweat, uh, you know. Um, I think that, that Hemingway in, in many ways is, is responsible for um, crafting the what we have in in our day is like a superhero aesthetic you know the the superhero that kind of talks like this and you know the man with no name who does brave things just because it's the right thing to do um so um that's part of the reason why you know his his work uh reverberates today um, and has continued to be influential, influen influential for more than 70, 80 years. Um, uh, he served in the First World War, the Great War. Um, he, um, Hemingway, responded to an ad in the newspaper and joined the Red Cross um, and signed up to be an ambulance driver in Italy. Um, he had tried to uh, join the military but was, uh, was not able to do so because he had poor eyesight. Um, so instead, he, he drove an ambulance for the Red Cross um, in Italy. Um, uh, he was wounded in the Great War by a um, mortar. Um, uh, he had left to go and get cigarettes and candy for his uh, soldier friends. Um, and uh, a mortar hit, and he was wounded. Um, but he uh, managed to uh, help bring uh, many uh, Italian soldiers to safety, and uh, he was uh, awarded the Italian Silver Medal of Bravery. Um, he was only 18 years old at the time. Um, after the First World War, Hemingway spent time in Paris and in Europe. He was uh, one of the, the bright young things of the lost generation. Um, he joined social circles uh, of modernist authors, uh, Gertrude Stein, James Joyce, with whom he would drink heavily and frequently, uh, Ezra Pound, Pablo Picasso, and uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald, just to name a few. Um, he continued to serve as a war correspondent um, after the Great War um, and saw many of the defining conflicts of the 20th century, um, the Greco-Turkish War, the Spanish Civil War, and of course, World War II. Um, he was awarded uh, the Bronze Star for Bravery in uh, 1947 after the Second World War. Um, throughout his career, he wrote hundreds of short stories, poems, and articles. Um, he's responsible for the uh, myth of the great lost American novel, um, uh, the idea that you know somewhere out there is the great novel that, that Hemingway wrote and lost. Uh, as the story goes, he lost a suitcase that had this fantastic novel in it. Um, his most famous novels are The Sun Also Rises, A Fair Worth of Arms, For Whom the Bell Tolls, and of course The Old Man and the Sea, which is uh, still read by uh, kids in school uh, to this day. Um, the Old Man and the Sea uh, earned Hemingway the Pulitzer Prize in 1952, and in 1954 Hemingway uh, received the Nobel Prize for literature. Um, he survived two plane crashes, and uh, in 1961 at his home um, in Idaho, uh, Hemingway took his own life. Um, so uh, the story that we read today also, I want to say as a trigger warning, um, it deals with issues of suicide. Um, Clean Well Lighted Place is one of my favorite short stories. It's, it's 
uh, very short. Um, I'll, we'll start on that in just a second, but it's a it's a really poignant um, uh, short story uh, that deals with loneliness and um, loss, and um, uh, to me, really does a good job conveying the feeling of loneliness. Um, I know that it's a difficult time for a lot of people uh, right now, for sure. And um, I wanted to select a short story that I knew uh, spoke to me um, about some of the kind of strange feelings of isolation that I know that we're feeling right now. So um, uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to begin to read uh, A Clean, Well-Lighted Place by Ernest Hemingway. <clears throat> Let me get some. A Clean, Well-Lighted Place by Ernest Hemingway. It was very late, and everyone had left the cafe except an old man who sat in the shadow the leaves of the tree made against the electric light. In the daytime, the street was dusty, but at night the dew settled the dust and the old man liked to sit late because he was deaf and now at night it was quiet and he felt the difference. The two waiters inside the cafe knew the old man was a little drunk and while he was a good client they knew that if he became too drunk he would leave without paying so they kept watch on him. Last week he tried to commit suicide one waiter said. Why? Uh, he was in despair. What about? Nothing. How do you know it was nothing? He has plenty of money. They sat together at a table that was close against the wall near the door of the cafe and looked at the terrace where the tables were all empty except where the old man sat in the shadow of the leaves of the tree that moved slightly in the wind. A girl and a soldier went by in the street. The street light shone on the brass number on his collar. The, gore, uh, excuse me, the girl wore no head covering and hurried beside him. The guard will pick him up, one waiter said. What does it matter if he gets what he's after? He'd better get off the street now. The guard will get him. They went by five minutes ago. The old man sitting in the shadow rapped on his saucer with his glass. The younger waiter went over to him. What do you want? The old man looked at him. Another brandy, he said. You'll be drunk, the waiter said. The old man looked at him. The waiter went away. He'll stay all night, he said to his colleague. I'm sleepy now. I never get into bed before three o'clock. He should have killed himself last week. The waiter took the brandy bottle and another saucer from the counter inside the cafe and marched out to the old man's table. He put down the saucer and poured the glass full of brandy. You should have killed yourself last week, he said to the deaf man. The old man motioned with his finger. A little more, he said. The waiter poured on into the glass so that the brandy slopped over and ran down the stem into the top saucer, saucer uh, of the pile. Thank you, the old man said. The waiter took the bottle back inside the cafe. He sat down at the table with his colleague again. He's drunk now, he said. He's drunk every night. What did he want to kill himself for? How should I know? How did he do it? He hung himself with a rope. Who cut him down? His niece. Why did they do it? Fear for his soul. How much money has he got? He's got plenty. He must be 80 years old. Anyway, I should say he was 80. I wish he would go home. I never get to bed before three o'clock. What kind of hour is that to go to bed? 
He stays up because he likes it. He's lonely. I'm not lonely. I have a wife waiting in bed for me. He had a wife once too. A wife would be no good to him now. You can't tell. He might be better with a wife. His niece looks after him. You said she cut him down. I know. I wouldn't want to be that old. An old man is a nasty thing. Not always. This man is clean. He drinks without spilling. Even now. Drunk. Look at him. I don't want to look at him. I wish he would go home. He has no regard for those who must work. The old man looked from his glass across the square, then over at the waiters. Another brandy, he said, pointing to his glass. The waiter who was in a hurry came over. Finished, he said, speaking with that omission of syntax stupid people employ when talking to drunken people or foreigners. No more tonight. Close now. Another, said the old man. No, finished. The waiter wiped the edge of the table with a towel and shook his head. The old man stood up, slowly counted the saucers, took a leather coin purse from his pocket and paid for the drinks, leaving half a Posada tip. The waiter watched him go down the street, a very old man walking unsteadily unsteadily, excuse me, but with dignity. Why didn't you let him stay and drink, the unhurried waiter said. They were pulling up the shutters. It's not half past two. I want to go home to bed. What is an hour? More to me than to him. An hour is the same. You talk like an old man yourself. He can buy a bottle and drink at home. It's not the same. No, it's not, agreed the waiter with a wife. He did not wish to be unjust. He was only in a hurry. And you, you have no fear of going home before your usual hour? Are you trying to insult me? No, hombre, only to make a joke. No, the waiter who was in a hurry said rising from pulling down the metal shutters. I have confidence. I am all confidence. You have youth, confidence, and a job, the older waiter said. You have everything. And what do you lack? Everything but work. You have everything I have. No, I never had confidence, and I am not young. Come on, stop talking nonsense and lock up. I am one of those who like to stay late at the cafe, the older waiter said. With all those who do not want to go to bed. With all those who need a, a light for the night. I want to go to home and into bed. We are of two different kinds, the older waiter said. He was now dressed to go home. It is not only a question of youth and confidence, although those things are very beautiful. Each night, I am reluctant to close up because there may be someone who needs the cafe. Ombre, there are bodegas open all night long. You don't understand. This is a clean and pleasant cafe. It is well lighted. The light is very good and also now there are shadows of the leaves. Good night, said the younger waiter. Good night, the other said. Turning off the electric light, he continued the conversation with himself. It was the light, of course, but it was necessary that the place be clean and pleasant. You do not want music. Certainly, you do not want music. Nor can you stand before a bar with dignity, although that is all that is provided for these hours. What did he fear? It was not a fear or dread, it was a nothing that he knew too well. It was all a nothing, and a man was a nothing too. It was only that, and light was all it needed, and a certain cleanness and order, 
Some lived in it and never felt it. But he knew it was all nada y pues nada y nada pues nada. Our nada, who art nada, nada be thy name, thy kingdom nada, thy will be nada, and nada as it is in nada. Give us this nada, our daily nada, and nada us our nada, as we nada our nadas, and nada us not into nada, but deliver us from nava. Pues nava, hail nothing, full of nothing, nothing is with thee. He smiled and stood before a bar with a shining steam pressure coffee machine. What's yours? asked the barman. Nada. Otro loco mas, said the barman, and turned away. A little cup, said the waiter. The barman poured it for him. The light is very bright and pleasant, but the bar is unpolished, the waiter said. Barman looked at him, but did not answer. It was too late at night for conversation. You want another copita, the barman asked. No, thank you said the waiter, and went out. He disliked bars and bodegas. A clean, well-lighted cafe was Now, without thinking further, he would go home to his room. He would lie in bed, and finally, with daylight, he would go to sleep. After all, he said to himself, it's probably only insomnia. Many must have it. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I'm so happy to be able to spend some time with you. Um, my name is Rylan Johnson, um, and I hope that you guys have a lovely afternoon and a wonderful weekend. Take care, be safe, be good to each other, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.